Welcome back to Harbour Unboxed. Today we're doing a little bit of overclocking with the Core i5-8600K. It actually just occurred to me that while I have overclocked and fully tested the Core i7-8700K and even the Core i3-8350K, I'm yet to overclock the Core i5-8600K. Generally speaking, the 8700K is good for around 5 GHz and with the 8600K you should be aiming for around that figure as well. Before any multipliers can be adjusted or voltages can be cranked up, we need a good cooler. Traditionally, I like to use all-in-one liquid coolers and my go-to model for a while now has been Corsair's Hydro Series H100i V2. It's a proven solution that comes in at a reasonable $110 US or $140 Aussie asking price. I am, however, always on the lookout for something new, something different, and if I'm lucky, something better. Earlier in the year during the Computex trade show in Taiwan, I spotted something that was indeed very new. In fact, so new it was upcoming at the time. On display over at the AeroCool booth was the new P7L240 all-in-one liquid cooler. As part of the company's new Project 7 brand, it was advertised as being able to do it all, and by that I mean cool high-end CPUs while also looking cool. Armed with a 240mm radiator that's 28mm thick, a pump and reservoir package that's serviceable, and more lighting than a Christmas tree, this all-in-one looks to have it all. That said though, it would want to, as AeroCool are charging $130 US, so around $20 US more than the tried and true H100 IV2. That said, it is slightly cheaper than Corsair's flagship, the H115i, and when it comes to bling, the P7L240 wins hands down, but how well does it actually work? To find out, I've overclocked my Core i5-8600K to 5GHz using 1.33 volts on the Gigabyte Z370 Aorus Gaming 7 motherboard. I should note though that my 6-core CPU hasn't been delittered, so overclocked to this frequency, it boils most budget liquid coolers without much effort. The H100 IV2 peaks at around 82 degrees in the Ida64 stress test, which is actually very respectable particularly given how quiet that cooler is. That said though, the massive Noctua NHD15 air cooler peaks at just 75 degrees, which is an exceptional result, but there are a few drawbacks to installing such a large cooler. The big one, of course, being compatibility with other components. So the first step was to strap on the AeroCool P7L240 and see how well it manages the overclocked 8600K. Could it avoid running into throttling issues at 5 gigahertz? Well, let's go find out. Right off the bat, I fired up the Ida64 stress test and started stressing just the CPU. After a short period, the P7L240 peaked at just 61 degrees, which is already 2 degrees cooler than the H100 IV2 after the same period of time. I then enabled the FPU stress test and left the system running for an hour, after which point a maximum temperature of just 77 degrees was logged. That's 2 degrees hotter than the NHD15, but 5 degrees cooler than the H100 IV2. So an impressive result indeed. I should note that for all the testing, I maintained an ambient room temperature of just 21 degrees. Next, I tried a real-world application, the Gooseberry Workload in Blender, which takes the overclocked 8600K about an hour to complete. In that time, the P7L240 peaked to just 71 degrees, which is considerably better than the H100 IV2, which went as high as 77 degrees. The Noctua air cooler, meanwhile, maxed out at just 68 degrees, so again, it is the best performer, but that probably isn't entirely unexpected. Then finally, I gave Cinebench R15 a shot, running the multi-core test three times in concession and reporting the maximum temperature. For this test, the P7L240 hit 73 degrees, while the H100 IV2 went as high as 79 degrees. Meanwhile, the monstrous NHD15 never went above 70 degrees. For those wondering, the multi-threaded score went from around 1,050 points at the stock operating clock speeds to 1,000. 220 points with all cores clocked at 5 gigahertz. So by keeping temperatures in check, performance in this test was boosted by 16%. In terms of cooling performance, the AeroCool P7L240, stop rattling, uh, is on par with the best sub $150 US all-in-one liquid coolers that I've tested. Although it wasn't able to match the Noctua NHD15 air cooler, it's well worth noting that the Corsair Crystal 570X case used for testing provided boatloads of airflow as the front and top glass panels were removed for the tests. With three 120mm front mounted intake fans, the NHD15 was fed loads of cool air 
and the hot air it dumped back in the case was quickly extracted. In a more confined space or a setup with less airflow, the P7L240 could potentially perform better as almost all the heat generated by the CPU is dumped directly outside the case. In addition to the strong performance, there are a number of other positive attributes. The all-important installation process is very straightforward, and I really appreciate the inclusion of double-sided tape for sticking the mounting bracket to the back side of the motherboard. This made the installation process considerably easier. The only hitch here being that the back plate features yellow tabs, and for those that care about aesthetics, which I feel be most people buying this kind of cooler, this could be a bit off-putting. Yellow tabs aside though, this flexible backplate does allow the P7L240 to be installed on almost all current desktop platforms. In fact, the only exception here is AMD's Threadripper TR4 socket. Thankfully though, the AM4 platform is supported along with all current Intel platforms, including the LGA2066 socket. Other than the 240mm radiator, which measured 275mm in length and 121mm wide, there's the block, pump and reservoir unit, which stands 62mm tall and 95mm at its widest. This does make it pretty large for an AIO, but this is because we do have a reasonably large 100mm reservoir here, which can be topped up with extra fluid if need be. Rather than your more typical or even square block housing, Aerocool went with a hexagon shape which looks very unique and thanks to the clear acrylic housing looks amazing when lit up. The two 120mm fans on the radiator also feature translucent blades which are backlit for a cool effect. This all ties together very nicely when connected to the Aerocool hub which allows you to control everything via software. That said though, the P7H1 hub is sold separately and without it you will require a motherboard that offers an RGB header. The only downside to all this RGB goodness are the cables. There are four cables in total coming from the fans and two from the water block. So in total you have half a dozen wires that you need to deal with and that can be a bit of a pain for the cable management department. I have to say I've been pleasantly surprised with what the AeroCool P7240 has to offer. I was really just expecting a bit of a light show from this thing and not much substance when it came time to perform, but yeah, it's really proven that it's a serious all-in-one liquid cooler and it's more than just an RGB light show. In a nutshell, I appreciate the easy installation process, the quiet operating volume, solid build quality, a unique appearance, and of course the performance. The negative aspects of this product, I would say, include the fact that the uh, P7H1, that's the RGB controller and fan controller, isn't included in the package. Uh, with an MSRP of $130 US, buying that thing separately will be a costly affair. The only other negative aspect I'd say is probably the massive amount of cables that hang off this thing to, to take advantage of those RGB effects. There are plenty of cables as you can see here and that while the installation process of the block itself onto the CPU socket is quite easy, having to uh, deal with these in a neat and tidy fashion is a bit time consuming I have to say. Overall Aerocool's P7 L240 performs great and well it looks great as well. I highly recommend it for anyone looking for an all-in-one that will give their rig that special look. And of course, if you plan to overclock your Core i5-8600K to 5 gigahertz, assuming the chip can do it, uh, this cooler will keep the temps in check. And well, that's gonna do it for this one. I'm your host, Steve. See you again next time. <laughs>